Welcome into another episode of Swamp 247's Commit Breakdown. My name is Jacob Rudner alongside Blake Alderman, our recruiting analyst. And Blake, uh, Gators got a big one, a flip from Florida State interior offensive lineman Roderick Kearney, the number 123 overall prospect in the 2023 class, moves the Gators up. For, they were eighth. They moved down to ninth. Uh, and now they've passed Clemson again, going back up to eighth with this commitment. Uh, it's a big deal for a position group, which you and I have talked about as kind of being an area of need uh, that hadn't really been addressed so far within the class offensive line, kind of an area uh, where the team has struggled to pull in commitments until last night. That's a big one. Uh, before we kind of zoom out and, and talk about that offensive line in general, let's talk about Roderick specifically. This is a big time recruitment uh, and a guy who you and I have been focused on for quite some time. Uh, and now he ends up in the Gators class. What is Florida getting? First and foremost, awesome thing about Roger Kearney is if you follow him on social media, guy wants an NIL from IHOP. Pancakes, offensive lineman, you want to bring those pancakes. Uh, physical, um, you know, if you watch his tape, plays through the whistle, nasty. Um, I first got a chance to watch him this year, heading into his senior year at the Under Armour camp in Miami. He came away with the MVP honors for the offensive line. Um, he's a guy that isn't the biggest as far as mass, but he is long and he has room to fill very athletic. Um, definitely an interior guy, uh, guard center is what Florida has been pitching him on. Um, an area where Florida really want to shore up that interior part of the offensive line, uh, tackle is another area they need to address. Um, but you know, if you've, if you've heard me talk about Florida's recruiting class, when you look at the offensive side, I felt like outside of the offensive line, Anything on offense really going forward is is really just a luxury at this point. I think they've done a good job um, outside of tight end, which really isn't a focus this cycle for Florida. They haven't been planning to take a tight end, so I'm kind of leaving that out of, of out of that statement. Um, but offensive line really has been the area where they needed to address. You know, that's the one where you know you had a need instead of uh, you know maybe anything you add from here on out at other positions on offense would be a luxury. Um, you know, interior part of the offensive line uh, really just physical, you know, you want to bring nastiness to that offensive line. Um, and that's what he brings. You know, he's not one for a lot of talking, um, just kind of lets his game speak for himself. So, you know, again, Florida shoring up the interior part of that offensive line. And this was a good get, not only do you get a really good player, but you flip him from an in-state rival. So um, on the field, nothing but positives there and off the field. Um, it's got to feel good to, to flip a guy from, from your in-state rival. Of course. And, and this is a situation where, you know, you, you mentioned it. In addition to being able to flip a, a kid from an in-state rival and to land a recruitment over a rival, uh, this is also a situation that really Florida needed to be able to to do. They needed the help along their offensive line. Uh, you mentioned how it was kind of one of those situations where uh, any offensive commitments that Florida was able to get would be a cherry on top, but this, an offensive lineman, was more of a need. Kind of address that for me. This is a situation that we've been following for a while. I believe on a recent podcast, uh, for those of you who listen, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and YouTube, if you're curious to, to go back and check it out. Uh, we had talked about the importance of being able to shore this group up uh, and finding a couple elite talents who might be willing to jump into the class. How, just how big is this, and what could it do for the position group moving forward? This obviously uh, a, a big-time recruitment with the top 150 kid. You know, I, I think you got a guy that's going to come in and he's going to press for early playing time. You know, obviously Florida's got um, offensive line is, is a strength this year. They've got a really good starting five past that. You know, I think that there's there's some question marks and, you, and you're losing a guy like Josh Braun, who recently announced that he would be entering the transfer portal later this year in December when he's able right. to. I'm going to get that degree. But that's a guy that was another guard. You know, he's, he's, you're kind of playing musical chairs here. You're, you're, you're losing one and you're adding another. So I think for the future, um, Florida continues, you know, they, again, tackle is an area they need to continue to address. Um, there's some guys that are trying to flip, um, you know, Lucas Simmons is a guy that uh, Florida's still in contact with. That's another Florida state commit. Uh, Tommy Kinsler is a guy that I think Florida still still had some contact with who's committed to Miami. Um, there's plenty other offensive linemen to Caleb Lomu, a guy from out West. Um, it's, it's an area where they need to continue to address people. Um, you know, K uh, Caden Jones is another guy that out there in Louisiana who's more of a true offensive tackle with that big six foot eight frame. Um, so, you know, this this was a big get because, A, you flip a guy. Um, and, and, you know, when you look at the targets list going forward, you know, there's really, you know, Caden Jones, who's had Florida leading for quite some time. You know, that's really kind of the only guy that really jumps out is, you know, 
somewhere where I think Florida has the best shot with, you know, and I, I think that, you know, flipping some guys, you know, it's never a given. Obviously it worked out well in this chance for Kearney in Florida. They were able to get him on campus twice earlier this, uh, earlier this fall. They had him on campus for an unofficial this past Sunday, which is when he gave the staff the news that he would be, you know, making that flip and was going to be a Gator. Um, so I think it's good because when you look at the board and overall, you know, again, there's really one guy that jumps out, and that's Caden Jones. That is, you know, someone where, you know, I think that Florida has a really good shot to land. So um, it's good to get a guy in while you have it, because at, at this point, outside of expanding the board, you know, there's really nobody in there that looks like a surefire slam dunk, at least in my opinion. So I think it's good to get not only a good player, but, you know, a guy that you, you know, had to flip. Um, in, in a in an area where you know Florida doesn't have a lot of you know a lot of traction with a lot of these guys you know and, and Kearney heading into before that flip you know when you showed up on campus twice early this fall kind of started to think that you know you show up for one game it's something to watch you show up twice you think something's really cooking there so um, I had put in a flip pick shortly after or shortly before he visited again for the Kentucky game. Um, so, you know, it, it took a couple weeks, but Florida was able to pull that one off. And again, you know, for the future of the offensive line, an area that was a strength this year for Florida, they're going to need to continue to make that a strength for them. And, and then by landing these guys through the recruiting, um, you know, even if it's a transfer portal after the season. So it's just an area where they need to continue to shore up because um, the way they like to run the ball on uh, Billy Napier's offense, you're going to need that bruising offensive line. And that's what Kearney brings. He's a bruiser. He's going to open up those holes. He's going to be physical. And that's what really fits well into what Florida wants to do offensively. Kearney's commitment moves Florida up to three offensive line commitments right now. He joins Najee Harris and Bryce Lovett, both of whom are three-star offensive linemen on the 24-7 sports composite. Florida up to 22 commitments. They were already at the number, but a decommitment from wide receiver Creed Whittemore, or athlete, I should say, Creed Whittemore, who has since committed to Mississippi State, moved the program back down to, number, to 21 total commits. Excuse me. Uh, Blake, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Commit Breakdown. Uh, I would encourage people, though, to stay locked on to our YouTube this week as there is uh, a lot more action that could be happening, some things to look forward to potentially later in the week. And then I will say, regardless of that, we are starting a brand new recruiting-only podcast. It'll be Blake and I uh, talking all things Florida recruiting once a week, every Friday. Uh, Blake, it's going to be a good time where we talk about uh, the class, what things could be happening uh, outside of the class, maybe looking forward, uh, and just kind of reviewing what Florida's been able to do to this point. Again, uh, ranked number eight overall in the country, jumping Clemson with the commitment of offensive lineman Roderick Kearney. Uh, so definitely stay tuned to that. You can find it on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, plenty of other audio-only platforms, and of course YouTube, uh, where we encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification button in order to uh, be aware of when we're posting any of our newest content. But for this episode, that's going to do it. For Blake Alderman, my name is Jacob Rudner, and we will see you on the next Commit Breakdown.